All right, today it's time to continue work on the Scaligum Falchion. Where we left off, I was polishing the fullers, and they're now all polished through 800 grit. I still have a little bit of work to do up here with the terminations, but for the most part, it's turned out great. I'm very happy with that work. It's now time to move on to doing the detail on these back notches. Up until now, we've been working from a very poor, very old black and white photo of the original sword that we're basing our falchion off of. But something happened between now and the last video, and that is that after spending a lot of time on the internet, we actually found a color photo. It's still an older photo, but it definitely shows us the detail on the back of the blade here is much different than we originally thought. So I was planning on grinding these notches into kind of blade breaker-esque uh, forms, but this color photo has shown us that that's not what they are at all. They're actually kind of fleur de lay esque round on the corners, and then a slight peak in the middle. So I'm gonna use the narrow wheel. We're gonna start grinding in those details. Then Ilya's going to be working on the guard, getting those pieces closer and closer to be able to put it all together. He's gotta to thin out the ring so that he can form them into a nice circle. And then we have to start trimming down the guard just to remove some of the bulk before he can actually shape it like it is on the original sword. But here's that photo that I was telling you about where you can really see the notches here and here how they're not square at all, even though that original photo showed them as such, they're not. So we're gonna now start by just moving to the narrow wheel, start grinding those details into the back of the blade. So far so good, details have really started to take shape, but I'm having trouble getting on the inside to do the undercuts on the inside of these, just because that sander, the way it's set up, the arm's kinda in my way and the wall's too close. So now I'm gonna move over to the big sander and uh, do some more of my undercuts and do all the finish work back over on the smaller sander.
I'm pretty happy with these three. I still have to polish them out and kind of refine the shape. So now I'm just going to start on this last notch. And the shape of this is more like a wave. So I'm just going to round it all over and then we'll start doing the undercut by hand. The way the power hammer die works is it also creates a flashing. Now before I continue forming the rings I have to grind it off but preserve it right here. If I don't preserve it right here me bending the rings will funnel the force into the weak spot and it will be unpleasant. Now what I'll have to do is use a fairly rough grinder and remove stuff here and here keeping this. You'll notice here that Illy is using a non-marring wooden hammer to do the shaping of the ring. And the purpose of this is that he doesn't want to manipulate the material as he's bending it around the horn of the anvil. If you used a metal hammer, 
they're gonna distort some of the surface of the ring and then you're gonna end up having to file or grind the shape back in later. So before we move on to doing any more work on the guard, there's one final thing we have to do to the blade, and that's tapering our tang. One thing that I think a lot of blade makers forget that's very evident in Japanese blades is the very thickest part of your blade should be your shoulder area, tapering out to the point and tapering out to the tang. And that's for twofold. One, when you're fitting your guard nice and tight, you want it to fit very snug right here at the shoulder so you want that to be the thickest point so when you drive your guard on it's nice and snug the second reason that we taper the tang out is actual shock distribution on a sword blade so when you hit a target with your sword blade the shock is sent down all the way if the thickest part of your blade is at your shoulder that shock is going to distribute evenly all the way out through the handle of the pommel if there's a thin spot right here at your shoulder, that shock's gonna stop right there. And that's often why you see swords with broken tangs right at the shoulder. It's because there's nowhere for that shock to go. It stops right there and just snaps your tang right off. So I'm gonna move to the sander right now, taper my tang all the way out, and then we'll be able to fit the guard nice and snug and everything will be ready to moving on to the next stage. Now we basically have all the metal pieces except the pommel for the falchion. Now I have the rings now, they're pretty close together in shape and they go on the sides of this guard, somewhat like this. The next thing to do is to do grinding, filing, cleaning up and welding them onto the rest of the guard. The next key stage is to fit the tang to this slot and that will take some doing. But that's all for today and catch us next time. Thanks for watching part 4 of our falchion build for Scalgrim. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and tell us in the comments below if you have any ideas for more collaborations with That Works in the future. And as always, please consider subscribing to the channel.